What's going on guys, Tom here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create a top-down shooting mechanic in the Godot engine. Now, I would like to preface this by saying that this is heavily inspired by Bracky's recent tutorial on top-down shooting in the Unity engine. So if you are interested in the Unity engine at all, please head on over to Bracky's channel. He has some amazing content there, including this very same topic. But with that being said, today we're gonna to do it in the Godot engine. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, you can see I've got my Godot engine open and I've created a very simple scene here with a 2D tile map, some collidable objects, which are the trees, and a player node here. Now, one thing to note before we start is that if we go into the player scene, you'll notice that the sprite here is rotated by 90 degrees and the collision shape 2D is also rotated 90 degrees. Now, the reason for that is when we're moving the mouse cursor, we don't wanna to have to add on an extra 90 degrees and it just makes it simpler if the player is already looking as what we define as zero degrees, which is basically looking right on the X axis. So if we come out of the player object there, if we run the game, you'll notice that once we start pressing the WASD keys and the mouse moving the mouse around, nothing's happening there. And that's fine, I haven't implemented any of the movement logic yet, so let's get to that. We'll close this. We'll right click on the player and we'll attach a script. We're going to call it player.gd and press create. Now we can remove all of this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a function. It's going to be called func process delta, just like you've seen before. And to make sure we're going to get the player to look at the mouse, all we're going to do here is say look at get global mouse position. And we're going to save that. Now, if you've watched my previous tutorial, you'll see my Godot quick tips that I already show you how to do this. It's a very simple technique to get the player to look at the mouse. Now, if we run the game, you'll see that when we move the mouse, the player is rotating to face wherever the mouse is looking. So that's the first thing done. The second thing is we want to get the player to move around when we use the WASD keys. To do that, we're going to come into our project settings, input map, and we're going to define some actions here. So I've already wrote the first one. It's move up, and then we're going to have move down, move left, move right, and we're also going to have a fire. We're going to define the keys for these, so move up, we're going to define as W, move down, we're going to define as S, move left, A, move right, D, and finally fire, we're going to assign to a mouse button, left button, and press add. So we're going to close that, we're going to come back into our script, and now we're going to define a physics process. So we're going to say func underscore physics process, and here we're just going to basically get the player to move whenever those keys are pressed. So we're going to say var direction equals vector2. We're creating a direction vector which we're going to manipulate by checking the input. To do that we're going to say if input.isAction pressed. And we're going to use the new actions that we've created. So we're going to say move up. So if the user is pressing move up, we're basically going to say direction plus equals vector2, 0 and minus 1 on the y axis. Next, we're going to say if input dot is action pressed, and we're going to do the same thing for move down. This time, we're going to assign a vector two of zero on the x-axis and one on the y. Again, input dot is action pressed. Now we're going to do move left. For this one, we're going to assign a vector two of minus one on the x-axis and zero on the y. And finally input dot is action pressed move right and here we're going to say direction plus equals vector 2 capital V 1 on the x-axis 0 on the y now I've noticed that I've used a lowercase v here so we'll fix that and finally what we're going to do then is we're going to call the move and slide function on this player, which is inheriting from kinematic body 2D. So we have access to the move and slide function. We're gonna assign it our direction. And we're gonna multiply that by a speed. Now we're gonna to have to define that variable at the top. So we'll use an export var speed. And we're just gonna assign this a value of 100 for now. Let's save that and run the game. And you'll notice we have an issue here. We've missed off the colon. Let's save that and run the game again. And now if we use the WASD keys, our player can move around and we can use the mouse to determine where the player is looking. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to spawn a bullet. Now I've gone ahead and created a bullet scene here. So if you come down into the player folder and into the bullet scene, come into the 2D view, 
you'll see here that we have this sprite and a collision shape. If I just turn off the collision shape here, you can see that we've got this sprite. We have the collision shape on, which is basically a capsule collider. And again, the bullet sprite itself is rotated by 90 degrees, as is the collision shape. And that is, again, just so that it's conforming to the direction that the player is looking, and so that we don't have to do any weird additions of 90 degrees there. So we're going to close this scene. I'm not going to save that. And we're going to come back into the player script here. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to assign a variable for the bullet. So we're going to say var bullet equals, and we're going to preload that bullet instance. So that's going to be res player bullet.tscn. Okay, we're going to save that. And now within our process function, we're going to check to see if the player is actually hitting the fire key, which is the mouse button. So we're going to say if input dot is action pressed, and we're going to say fire. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new instance of that bullet. So we're going to say var bullet instance equals bullet dot instance. And that's a function. So we open and close our brackets there. And now we're going to assign the bullet instance dot position. And we're going to give it our own position here. So we're just going to say position. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to say bullet instance dot rotation degrees equals our own rotation degrees. We want this to be facing the same direction that the player is. And then we're going to apply some physics to this. So the bullet actually is a rigid body 2D, so we can apply some physics here. So we're going to say bullet instance dot apply impulse. Now what this is going to do is going to apply a single impulse force to the bullet, which is going to then project it at a constant rate. So we're going to say apply impulse. The first thing this wants is a vector 2 offset. We don't want to offset it at all, so we're just going to pass in an empty vector 2. And the second one is the actual impulse force that we want to assign. So again, we're going to say vector2, and we're going to give it a value here. We're going to call it bullet speed uh, on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to say dot rotated, and then we're going to pass our own rotation here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create an impulse force, which is a vector2, for the bullet speed that we assign up the top, which we're going to create in a moment but it's going to rotate that vector to the direction that our player is currently looking at. So we're going to close off that. We're going to define another variable here, so export var bullet speed. We're going to give it quite a big number. We want the bullet to fire out quite fast. We're going to save that. And now the next thing we need to do, actually we need to make a couple of changes here. We need to get the global position of our player and not the actual local position. So to do that, we're going to say get global position which is a function. Next thing we need to do is we need to add this bullet instance to the scene. To do that, we're going to say get underscore tree to get the root tree over here. Then we're going to say get underscore root. And then finally add child bullet instance. Oops, it's my mistake there, bullet instance. Okay, so we're going to save that. And now we're going to play. And if we press the mouse key, you'll see that we are firing bullets. They are facing the direction that the player is. But you'll also notice that there are loads of them. And you'll see that they're nicely reacting to physics there, which is great. But we need to fix this issue. Now, the reason it's doing this is because we're checking for if the action is pressed. But that's going to happen um, quite a lot of times based on how fast your game is running. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some sort of a delay here. Now, if you've followed my FPS tutorials, you'll see this very same technique used there. But what we're going to do is we're going to export a variable called fire rate. And we're going to give this a value of something like 0.2. And this is in seconds, so 0.2 of a second. We're going to define another variable here called can fire. So var can fire. And we're going to initialize that value to true so the player can fire straight away. And where we're checking if the fire action is pressed here, we're just going to say and can fire. So are they pressing the fire key and are they allowed to fire? What we're going to do is we're going to come down to the bottom of this uh, this if statement here. And we're just going to do a can fire equals false. So we're saying they've fired now, they're not allowed to fire anymore. And then we're going to wait for that fire rate. Now to do that, we're going to say yield, open brackets. And then we're going to create a timer. So get tree dot create timer. We're going to give it our fire rate, so fire underscore rate. Close the brackets there. We're going to put a comma and then we're going to wait for the timeout signal. 
And next, once that's uh, completed, we're going to say can fire equals true. Okay, let's save that. Let's play that again. And now you'll notice that we're firing at a much slower rate and that looks a lot better. But you'll notice that the bullets are coming from exactly the center of the player, which sort of doesn't look right. And it's also making the collision uh, a bit wonky in that the bullet sort of shoots off to the right hand side of the player a little bit. Now we're going to fix that. And to do that, we're going to come into our player scene. So we'll click on this scene icon here. We're going to right click on the player node. We're going to add a new child node. And this is just going to be a node 2D. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it bullet point. And you'll see here, if you look closely, that we've got this little cross here. I'm going to come over to the right hand side in the inspector, click on transform. And I'm just going to click and drag the X axis here. And you'll see the little cross moving in the scene view there. And I'm just going to move it until it's sort of at the end of the barrel there. So about there. I'm going to save that. I'm going to come back into the script. And where we're assigning the global position, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a reference to that bullet point. So dollar bullet, with a capital B, bullet point. And then we're going to say dot get global position. Okay, save that, run the game again. And now you'll notice that when we fire, it's coming out of the end of the barrel and everything's working nicely. The bullets are now bouncing off the trees and that's fine. We can move around and we can also fire bullets there. Okay, so that's fine, but we want to up this a little bit. We want to make it look, look a little bit more flash. And we also don't want the bullets to sort of just bounce off the collidable objects. We want them to sort of create an impact and then disappear. So we're going to open up our bullet scene here, come into the 2D view. Now there's one thing we need to do here first. We need to click on the bullet object itself, which is the root of the scene here. And over on the right hand side under the rigid body 2D settings, you're going to come down to contacts reported and you're going to change that to one. Now, if we hover over contacts reported, you can see that it says the maximum number of contacts to report. So basically when this rigid body collides with something, it's going to report that it's actually hit something. Now, if we have this as one, it's not going to tell us anything. It's not going to fire a signal that says, Hey, I've collided with something. So we're going to change that to one because we're only interested in knowing one thing that it's collided with at a time. And we're also going to tick this contact monitor to on as well. Now, if you don't do this, the signal that we're about to attach to just won't fire. So we won't be able to determine whether or not we've hit anything. We're going to save that. And then we're going to right click on the bullet and we're going to attach a script, create that script there. We're going to remove all of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the node section here, click on the bullet object. And here underneath rigid body 2d, what we're going to say is body entered we're Going to right click and press connect. Now this is going to come up with a box that says, which which node do you want to connect this signal to? Now we're just going to select the bullet object itself, which is the root. We're going to leave everything else as default and we're going to press connect. Now you'll see here that that's created a function on bullet body entered. That's going to fire whenever this bullet actually impacts with something. We're going to modify this and we're going to say if not body dot is in group and we're going to say player. So basically if we collided with something, that isn't the player, then we're going to run the following piece of code. So what we're going to do for the moment is we're just going to call Q3, which should delete this bullet from the scene. We're going to come on over to our player scene again, click on the root player item here, come on over to the right hand side under the node tab and click groups. And we're going to assign this the player group. Now make sure you spell this all lowercase, just like we did in the script. If there's any case um, differences, it won't work. It's case sensitive. We're going to save that and we're going to play the game. And now you'll notice that when we fire and hit a tree, the bullet disappears. Okay, so we're getting there, but we need it to be a bit more impactful. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an explosion animation. Now I've already imported some sprites here for an explosion. You'll see we've got explosion one through five. And to create an explosion animation from those, it's really quite simple. We're going to come over to our main scene, right click on the world and add a child. And we're going to add an animated sprite. Now, if you hover over this little triangle here, it's going to say a sprite frames resource must be created. So we're going to come on over to the right hand side under the inspector and where it says frames, we're going to click the little arrow and press new sprite frames. Click on that. And now you'll get this animation panel down the bottom here. We're going to click on the little folder icon, come on over to our sprites, choose all of the explosion sprites and press open. So you can see here that we've got all of our five uh, frames. 
On the right hand side, we're going to choose playing as on. And you'll see here in the scene view that that's showing us what that animation is going to look like. I'm just going to speed that up by changing the speed scale to something like two. That looks a bit better. We're going to save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this animated sprite. Actually, we're going to rename it first to explosion. And then we're going to right click on it, save branch as scene. And here we're just going to save that as explosion. And then we're going to delete it from the main scene. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our bullet, go into the script, and we're going to get a reference to that just like we did for the bullet in the player script. We're going to say var explosion equals preload, and here we're going to say res, and it's just in the root, so we're going to say explosion.tscn. And where we're doing our Q3 here, what we're going to do is we're going to say var explosion instance, so this is exactly the same technique as we did for the bullet. We're going to say explosion.instance. Then we're going to say explosion instance dot position equals, and we're just going to get our global position for the bullet. So wherever the bullet is at this time of impact, we're just going to assign the explosion instance to the same position. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did for the bullet again, get tree, get root, add child, explosion instance. Okay, so the final thing to do is if we come down to our explosion scene here and click on the explosion item itself, what we're going to do is we are going to right click, attach a script, create that, and then over in the node panel on the right hand side, come over to signals and choose animation finished. Now you can right click and press connect or you can just double click on it. We're going to leave everything as default and press connect. And then all we're going to do here is we're going to remove all of this code and when the animation finishes on this, all we're going to do is we're going to say Q3. So when the animation finishes, we want this to um, disappear. We're going to press play. And now you'll see that when we hit the tree, the animation object appears, but it isn't actually showing the full animation. So we're going to fix that quickly by coming over to our explosion here going over to the inspector and just making sure that everything is ticked to playing. So playing is on centered is on. That's all fine. We're going to save that again, just to make sure that we did actually save those changes. Cause that looks correct to me. We're going to press play and then we're going to try that again. And there we go. So now we have our explosion animation firing. So that's it. We have a player that we can move around with WAS and D. He's going to look at wherever the mouse is uh, positioned. We can fire bullets using a rigid body 2D and some uh, impulse force. And we have impacts and we have explosions on impact as well and the bullets disappear. And that is basically it. That is top down shooting in Godot. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I just want to say again that this tutorial was heavily, heavily inspired by Brackies. Please go over and check out his tutorial if you're interested in Unity. If you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't done already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget you can download all of the source code for today's video in the description below and over on our GitHub page. We also have a Discord. If you want to come and be a part of the community there, the link is in the description below. And if you want to support this channel, I also have a Patreon. I would really appreciate it if you consider becoming a patron over there, the link in the description below. Thanks again.